Yo, what's going on, you guys? Now, check this out. IGN just posted an exclusive clip from Transformers 1 featuring Steve Buscemi in his role as Starscream. And not only that, we also got to see Soundwave and Shockwave after they captured D16, B127, Alita 1, and Orion Pax. Now, I know there's not a lot of context as we check out this clip, but after we're done watching it, we're going to rewatch it. I'm going to pause it, stop it in a couple places, and just kind of break it down for you guys and give you my thoughts. But I've got the video all ready for you guys. Let's take a look at it. Now, are you spies? Or just incompetent lackeys? We're not spies. But he is incompetent. Scanning <laughs> electrical impulses. He speaks the truth. That just means he believes himself. Like any spy would. Sam, send him me! Why is he gagged? He wouldn't stop talking. Even when he was unconscious? Especially when he was unconscious. Enough. Two options for you. One, we slowly dismantle each of you, one bolt and screw at a time, and really make sure you feel it. Or two, in exchange for a quick death, you give us intel on the Energon trains, access to the mines. Who exactly are you guys? Uh, <gasps> The Cybertronian High Guard. Uh, I told you it wasn't tight enough. <laughs> All right. All right. Great clip. Movie was fantastic, but I got a couple things I want to break down for you guys. So let's play it back and I'm going to pause it. All right. Now, so this, this shot here you coming up right here. We've got Starscream sitting on the throne. And I felt like this was very reminiscent of the King Starscream situation in the original 1986 animated film. Now, I don't know if this was just a happy coincidence or if they did this completely on purpose. Either way, I, I loved it. And I was able to single it out very quickly when I saw this movie. Or just incompetent lackeys. <laughs> We're not spies. But he is incompetent. All right, right there. He is incompetent. That was one of the things that really surprised me about this movie. I fully went into this expecting that D16 was going to be more, you know, reckless, rough around the edges, but it was the opposite. That was Orion Pax in a nutshell. He makes a lot of decisions that negatively impact a lot of people around him, including himself. Uh, he, he can't seem to do anything right. Although he dreams really big, which is great and is kind of uh, foreshadowing of how optimus prime is uh especially where like hope is concerned orion pax in this movie has a lot of hope which is fantastic except when it gets you into you know sticky situations scanning electrical impulses he speaks the truth that just means he believes himself <laughs> like any spy would all right and then this right here this is a big one for me i feel like this is a metaphor or maybe a shot at the Bayverse. Metaphorically, we've got Bumblebee gagged. He cannot speak. And this, I got to admit, is one of my favorite versions of Bumblebee in any of the Transformers movies I've seen. Uh, because one of the things that drove me crazy years ago with the Bayverse films is that Bumblebee just can't talk. Instead, he has to communicate through the radio. And that, I felt like, was a disservice to the character. I, I know, for me, growing up when I was watching the Generation 1 cartoon, I really loved Bumblebee. He had a lot of personality and he had a lot of things to say. And I thought it was important. You know, I mean, how else can you convey your personality, your thoughts, your feelings without talking? I mean, it's very difficult. It can be done. And I mean, the Bayverse does what they can through the radio, but I, I, I don't know. They should have allowed him to talk. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it a little too much. I felt like this was a shot from Paramount at, <laughs> at Michael Bay for, for literally gagging B-127 Bumblebee. Uh, why is he gagged? He wouldn't stop talking. Even when he was unconscious? <laughs> Especially when he... Okay, the temper tantrum from Shockwave actually made me very happy. It maybe seems silly and a little bit childish, but honestly, this is like a cold, calculated individual who lacks a lot of personality. He's the complete opposite of literally almost every Transformer. So it was nice to see that even for the short period of time that we had him on the screen, he had a sense of presence and some personality and... <laughs> I actually really liked this. He was unconscious. Enough. 
two options for you. One. This Starscream design, by the way, is freaking fantastic. Not only does it remind me of the G1 cartoons, which is my favorite, but it also reminds me of the way he looked in the War for Cybertron video games. Uh, not completely, not 100%, but very similar in a lot of ways. I, I think it just comes down to the detailing. We slowly dismantle each of you, one bolt and screw at a time, and really make sure you feel it. Or two, in exchange for a quick death, you give us intel on the Energon trains, access to the mines. Who exactly are you guys? <sighs> ah, the Cybertronian High Guard. <laughs> All right, this is a big deal in the movie, They're like a huge deal, because one of the things that, I don't know, maybe it's the world building, but one of the things that was very important to a lot of these characters is the history of Cybertron. They, they hold a lot of people in very high regard. So you have the high guard, and then you have people that are in political power. They almost worship them like heroes, uh, kind of like we do with with, you know, athletes or you know, different celebrities out there. We want to buy their cards. We want to have their merchandise. We want to go see them in concert, etc. This is very similar to that. And we see that sprinkled throughout the course of the film with different characters. And uh, I think it's just one of those things that allows you to get a really good insight into how people like Orion Pax and D16 really view their world. And especially with D16, how that world can just come crashing down this, uh, you know, the second one of your heroes isn't the person you expect them to be. Ah, I told you it wasn't tight enough. Now, this was just a handful of things that I myself was able to pick out of a one minute clip. So you can just imagine how many more references there are in the full film for you guys to chew on and get excited about. Transformers 1 comes out September 20th. And if you guys are a Transformers fan, I strongly urge you to check this out because I promise you this has the potential to be one of the greatest Transformers movies of all time. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.